Welcome everyone. Welcome to this astrology report on the noon in Leo and also the full moon in Pisces at the end of the month. I am like condensing them down because FYI, I am going to be out on the road traveling again very soon. So I am pre-recording a lot, a lot of work right now. In fact, I did all the um, astrology readings, uh, astro tarot readings for um, this new moon in Leo today. And tomorrow I'm going to film for the full moon on Pisces. So um, by the time y'all see those astro tarot readings, you know, I'll be packing up probably and heading on down the road to travel again. Won't say just yet where I'm going, but um, it's, it's kind of a spirit led trip. Let me say that, okay? But anyway, let me say that, uh, you know, I'm for brevity's sake, I'm going to keep it kind of not so complicated, right? I'll keep it simple here. And uh, hopefully y'all are seizing this moment with Lionsgate Portal on August 8th, which we have until the 12th to really step into that energy. And I did put out an Astro Tarot reading on that. So if you want to see the oracle cards that I pulled for your sign or whatever signs you're interested in, um, you can do so on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. It's available. But that said, um, let's talk about this new moon in Leo and we'll close out with a full moon in Pisces at the end. On the 16th, when we have this new moon in Leo, I think, you know, mostly this is going to impact the fixed signs, obviously, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And I think it is marking a brand new beginning that is maybe coming from a heart-based place and people pursuing their passions. It's going to open up some opportunities for us to um, be more creative in the way that we express ourselves. And that can be, you know, artistically, it could also be, you know, finding a way to communicate ourselves in new ways in in different ways maybe hopefully more effective ways and you know finding our voices being heard in a way that actually is meaningful you know i myself even with the cards that i pulled today for aquarians it, it was talking about this issue of finding a way to tell your story and give voice to your life in a way that is empowering and i've actually been thinking about this a lot and it's kind of relevant, right? Because Aquarius is opposite of Leo. So um, collectively, you know, we're all going through these energies of looking at ego, self-interest, which would be Leo versus others and altruism, which is Aquarius. So I think also there is a push to be more courageous. And I do see people finding their voice more. I've been seeing that on social media. I'm actually proud of the collective. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are still not awake. They're sleepwalking through life or they've gone silent. They're in denial. Leo King was talking about that. My God, if y'all are not watching Leo King, please do. And he's a great example of what it means to be Leo, in my opinion. Um, but he was talking in a recent video about, I think it was for the full moon in Aquarius. Yeah. At the beginning of this month he was talking about how we collectively need to find our voices we need to speak up we need to have the courage to step up and, and stand out and do what needs to be done whether it's popular or not you know whether it's pc or not and so i'm i'm absolutely on board with that message i think that i think that more people have been the energy is really really encouraging that and particularly around the time of this new moon it's also going to be a good time for enjoying more pleasure in life. So if you find yourself getting out and about more, like I have been, I don't know if you can tell, like a little bit too much sign yesterday, <laughs> but I've been hanging out at the pool. And uh, some of y'all seen, I've been posting, you know, videos and whatnot of, um, you know, taking myself out, doing things that I have long wanted to do um, and enjoying some me time and treating myself to things that, you know, maybe I would have liked other people to treat me to, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta, you gotta follow the desires of your own heart because sometimes, right, people are off doing their own things. So you do you, right? And so this is a good time to really um, not just think about what the desires of your heart are, but actually do something about it. Um, 
how can you go out and have fun and hopefully around the time of this full moon things will be lining up for me to connect more with others and have more good times with them not just myself so the challenges of this energy at this time is is going to be avoiding drama and unhealthy self-interest and i am seeing that in people particularly if you are dealing with people who are not very self-aware they've not done a lot of self-healing work they're still living out of their shadow and uh you know this is these are people who are seeking attention in, in not good ways right i think that we all need attention whether we want to admit it or not there's really nothing bad about that per se but if you're doing it in a really unhealthy negative way if you're trying to get validation from other people if, you know overly concerned about what other people are thinking and what they're doing and getting their attention and getting them to notice you and i'm sorry to say but i have seen a little bit of that and too much of that vanity in others but again i think that was more coming from someone who is has got some years of growing up to do and you know we've all been there we've all had to um mature and those of us who have who are older have been there done that we can kind of see right through it and so just be aware that you may see more of this coming out and i certainly have in leo season i mean that's the downside of leo season we can say great things about leo season um because the sun is exalted you know it's it's uh it's in a fabulous placement, adding good times, vitality, healing, you know. But on the downside, if you have people who are incredibly vain and self-focused and all of that, it's just, you know, oh, what are they going to say about this? Or what do they think about this? Or I'm going to do this so that I can put on some appearance or show and I can get attention and yada, yada, yada. Well, that's the shadow side of Leo. I think you guys know. So with new moons, as many of you already know, it's a good time to set intentions, powerful intentions that for this energy would have to do with new beginnings that strengthen and add confidence and compassion and courage. Like what could you start? What could you step into? What could you embark upon that you can be bold about? or that causes you to rise up in a higher level of boldness than what you have before. And I think also it's an energy that pushes us to focus on what our heart's desires are. Like I said before, all this Leo energy has been asking us, like, what, what can we be loyal to? What's loyal to us? And having the courage to ask for it, even though some people may laugh at you or may try to shame you you know I'm sorry to say that kind of stuff is real it goes on out in the real world but us not being silenced you know I'm working through these things myself I recently shared a video with y'all about how we are in the midst of Chiron and Aries retrograde as I'm going through Chiron return <laughs> um, not a fun time, not a fun time. And and with, you know, the North Node right now in Aries, we're all collectively having to like step into our, our own authority and individualization and, and really assert our needs, but do it in a way that doesn't really disregard or disempower others and try to find win-win situations. But sometimes you arrive at that realization by you know, laying your cards out on the table and the other person lays their cards out on the table and you realize, you know, we don't have, um, I don't know, a full deck, if that's the correct analogy. I'm kind of pulling it out of the ethers right now, but, um, you know, between the two of us, we can't come up with a winning match or pair, you know? And yeah, sometimes that that's hurtful because you got to risk rejection to say, oh, I don't have a lot to work with here, or I don't have what you're looking for. I do have a lot to work with, but it's not what you're looking for. It's not what you need or vice versa. And you got to have that difficult conversation where, yeah, maybe somebody feels inadequate. Maybe somebody feels rejected, but at least you get it all out on the table of, you know, what you want and what you need. And it's not coming, it's not creating situations where you have not because you ask not, right? This is, if you have not, it's because you asked and you just weren't able to make it work. 
So yeah, that takes courage. We're back to the Leo courage that we need during this time. And also having the confidence to um, back up your words with action. The confidence to not only be able to say, hey, I'm going to stretch myself to try to deliver this to myself and or others, to empower myself and to empower others, I'm gonna also back it up with the action, not just the words. Goals are probably gonna come into play, obviously, with this new moon, and these would be goals that are in some way going to enhance enjoyment in your life, maybe your romantic life, maybe with your kids, or just simply you know, having more pleasure in your life, more enjoyment, um, fun in your life, or at least living a life that you are proud to say you live. Now, the moon will be conjunct Venus retrograde in Leo during this time. And so that's why I mentioned earlier that perhaps some of the pleasure and enjoyment that you are adding to your life or considering adding to your life during this time is uh, impacting, you know, loves from the past or something that you've been nostalgic about. Yeah, maybe from your younger years or with your children. Um, and put you in more of a innocent heart space, which is lovely. I mean, hell, a high time for that, yeah. Uh, it can be also a very emotionally warm and reflective energy, an energy where you're reflecting on what you value and love, what is nurturing and nourishing you. And again, if you're not immersed in that, if you're not really putting yourself out there and reconnecting with people who have brought that to you in the past, because yeah, let's just be real, when Venus is retrograde, you could be reconciling with a lost love or reconnecting with, a, you know, and then for those of you who are not interested in that, it's just you're reconciling something within yourself. Like if you are missing this person, you tune into, oh, what is it that I'm missing about this person? And it was maybe the good times that you did this, that, and the other, I don't know, check it off your list. And then you tune in and you're like, I really need to get that back in my life, even though it may not be with that person maybe with hopefully another person. It helps us, however this comes in, it helps us to align more with what gives us pleasure in our lives, what boosts compassion, what deepens loyalty towards what we care about and what cares about us. We also have the moon tightly squaring Uranus at this time, so heads up, and I am addressing it in the uh, tarot readings, there could be some kind of sudden unexpected change or shift, of course, okay? And yeah, it might be outside of your control. It could also be a change that in some way challenges your ego or your sense of self-concern, like, oh my God, what's gonna happen to me? Or this is not what I wanted or not what I planned. But again, I don't wanna necessarily put a negative tone on it because it is Uranus, and when we're talking about Uranus, it can go either way. You just don't know if it's gonna land heads or tails. And obviously that has a lot to do with perspective. Maybe you might think it lands tails, but you realize later that was a heads up for you. You know, just be aware that at the time of this new moon, and you're trying to get off into new beginnings and you know have a good time and enjoy yourself and maybe reconnect with something that you deeply care about a curveball could be thrown your way and it might have you reassessing within yourself how you take care of your needs and get them met. And it might even be that surrender is your only option that you just kind of have to let go and let God. And you're like, well, that was a monkey wrench. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but okay, let's go with it universe. It's one of those things. So that's really all I have to say about the new moon in Leo right now. I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, this is sandwiched in between two full moons in Aquarius and Pisces. Uh, you know, we had that one in Aquarius at the beginning of the month, the one in Pisces at the end of the month. So overall, a very spiritual month. And let me just say that as you are going out and trying to connect with your heart's desires, be spirit-led as much as possible. And yes, this might require a level of surrender that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And with the fixed energy of this new moon, there might be a party that wants to hunker down and nail it down, you know, and make stuff happen a certain way. And you've got a really set mindset about how it's gonna happen or how it needs to happen. But with us shifting into this mutable full moon at the end of the month, 
again, so spiritual. Um, you may have to, as the month unfolds, have to kind of relax and allow certain things. I'm hearing let the chips fall where they may and just kind of Pisces in it, which is flow with it, right? Like um, in Finding Nemo, keep swimming, quit, keep swimming, keep swimming and enjoy the ride. Okay, so let's talk about this full moon in Pisces at the end of the month on August 30th. I really feel this is an energy of people having to let go and release. And again, it might be that with that new moon in Leo on the 16th, you embarked on this whole new thing and you were really excited about it and really enjoying the ride, but oh, wait a minute, I gotta let something go. And it might be completely off script. It might be something really out in the ethers, really spirit led. The fortunate thing about this is that because it is such spiritual energy, you know, it's in the water sign of Pisces, which is very much out in the ethers, right? Um, you will have the empathic sensitivity to tune into any kind of spiritual downloads you're getting during that time that would guide you in your rightful path and surrendering and releasing whatever needs to be surrendered and released, um, you're gonna have the spiritual downloads to know, but you have to allow these feelings or these intuitive empathic nudges to come in. You have to allow them and feel what you need to feel and not try to control it, which is going to be hard for some people. We're coming out of the last two lunar cycles in fixed signs. So over the last previous month, you may have had a very fixed idea of, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna let this go to make way for this, and then I'm doing this over here, and I need this to happen like this, but oh, wait a minute, by the time we get to the end of the month, Spirit's like, oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. So you got your program, but we have ours. <laughs> yeah, have fun with that, okay? Um, Pisces Stellium here knows all about that. Um, yeah, with the, with the South Node in Gemini, who cares what you know? <laughs> Follow your North Node in Sagittarius. Be spirit-led. As crazy wacky as it looks to everybody else, it's not going to make sense. But damn it, spirit says so. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I know about that life, unfortunately. And so you're going to have to be okay with it. I'm going to just say going, reflecting back on, you know, the, the new moon in Leo. Well, that should have prepped you for this. Okay. That should have prepped you to say, you know what? I'm going to live out of my heart. I'm going to have the courage and the boldness to do that and to speak my truth and to honor my truth and to empower others in doing the same come what may. Um, spirit was really helping you at that time to do it, but now it's like, okay, so you got you got to allow, you got to allow. Um, and yeah, may, maybe if you did have those tough conversations at or around the 16th with that new moon in Leo, uh, maybe you did have some kind of come to Jesus moment, for lack of better wording, where you realize, ooh, you know, I mean, I, I, this is not going to work, or I can't make this come together with this person, or they, these, this situation, or whatever. And there might be a moment around, you know, this full moon in Pisces where you're having to forgive yourself, forgive yourself or forgive others for um, not being able to line up and come together or um, not being able to just really get on the same page with whatever it is that you had fixed in your head of how it needed to be. And so along with this continued, this continued theme of using compassion, which I think we saw from the 16th with the new moon in Leo into the full moon in Pisces, there is this element of having to process any kind of anger about it um, or frustration and maybe even um, resetting boundaries based on where people have now clearly communicated they're at like you know this is my line in the sand and this is what i'm gonna go after and oh gee shucks you know maybe it doesn't align with your heart's desires but you know how can we how do we redraw lines of, of boundaries you know to respect each other going after their own rightful path in life going after their heart's desires and really honoring that and empowering that so we don't we don't impede others
and we don't impede ourselves and we don't get hung up in anger or unforgiveness because um, other people are just, you know, they're going in a different direction uh, for whatever reason, okay? And this is also a time of addressing any kind of denial that you've had in your, within yourself about, about your life's direction and other people's direction in life. It might not even necessarily be about direction, although I somewhat think it is. I'm just saying be open that perhaps you come to a realization around that full moon that you're having to accept something that you have denied or has been denied. And that's where a challenge comes into play where I do feel that, yeah, this is very, very emotional energy. Like when we're talking about lunar energy in general, emotional, but we, we talk about a full moon. This is a release maybe of emotions. And, and then you put Pisces in the mix of this water sign. Holy crap. Um, you know, I can see, I can see um, people being in their feelings during this time, absolutely. And so it might be a challenge to bring stability to relationships, particularly if people are not feeling emotionally stable at this time. It could also be a challenge in terms of letting go of any toxicity in relationships, because I think that you are going to have a lot of people engaging in escapism, Neptuning out, spiritually bypassing whatever the message is from the universe that they're not ready to hear, that's giving them a reality about, you know, it's like giving them a reality check that's sober, uh, having to do with this 3D and how, I don't know, if they're having trouble basically bringing heaven down to earth. I'm seeing the Seven of Cups card for some reason, <laughs> you know. If it's a sober reality check that they're not ready to accept or process or integrate into this 3D, um, you could see a lot of people engaging in addictive behavior, escapism, right? Drugs, drinking, things like that. Just tuning, net tuning out generally, okay? To spiritual bypass the downloads that are coming in. So yeah, being like clean and pure and free of all this toxicity on an emotional, spiritual level might be very challenging to some people. I, I, I'm hearing something about poor coping mechanisms. So I think it's gonna, like that's gonna mostly probably hit those who have the poorest coping mechanisms. And I, I throw no shade at you. You know, if, I mean, hell, I could probably do it myself. Um, maybe you want to have a glass of wine, right? Like, uh, hell, I had some wine yesterday. Damn, it was great. <laughs> you know, I'm known to do that every so often, you know. We'll blame it on my Pisces stellium. But, you know, maybe this full moon in Pisces is not the best time to have a glass of wine. Just saying. I, there might be a temptation towards it. But if you Neptune out with drugs or alcohol or whatever, you're probably gonna miss the messenger, right? So if I were you, I would probably use this time more constructively instead of having a glass of wine or whatever you do that floats your boat <laughs> when your boat ain't floating. Um, you know, do something like, you know, take a swim, go out on a nature walk. But I think definitely being around water being around like a body of water, like a lake, a river, an ocean, or a pool, you know, or just um, take take an Epsom salt bath, put some dead sea salt in there or whatever, put some essential oils, you know, whatever works for you to help to heal, but in a spiritually connecting way, not in a disconnecting way, if you know what I mean. Obviously, you know, it's, gonna this energy is gonna most impact the the mutable signs gemini virgo sagittarius and pisces will probably feel this the most oh wow that's like all three of my kids i just realized that um yeah what well, you my taurus my taurus daughter has a gemini still in you so when i see gemini i think of her um and i have and two of them have virgo placement so that's interesting okay Moving on, <laughs> watch out for the people around you because right, they, they might want to Neptune out or there might be something that they're having difficulty processing emotionally during this time. So what's going to happen is that with this new, with this full moon, we are going to close out a very spiritual month that started, like I said, with a full moon in Aquarius and 
both of these energies have been imparting increased intuitive and empathic uh, energies. And they're also energies that are more concerned with the bigger picture of things, the collective. While at the center of stage, right, with that new moon at mid-month, um, in Leo was kind of saying, what about me in the midst of all of this? It's, it's kind of interesting if you look at it. It's like, well, yeah, let's focus on you, North Node in Aries, new moon in Leo. But surrounding this energy is... And how do you fit into the greater scheme scheme of things, right? Um, look at the bigger picture of how no man's an island to himself. You know, we're all affecting one another and we are affected by one another. Another interesting consideration about these lunar, these full moon energies in Aquarius and Pisces is that it's these two signs that are considered the aliens of the zodiac. And it's these two signs that are probably the most altruistic, that feel more called to serve others than any other sign. Yes, there are some people that are not living up to that, right? There are some Aquarians and Pisces who are not living up to it. It's too much pressure, whatever. Or, or you know, other placements in their chart. I mean, right, it's not a one size fits all, but generally speaking, um, Right, and I've got I've got an Aquarius Sullium and a Pisces Sullium. So I definitely feel a lot of times like I don't fit in. I'm the alien, right, of the Zodiac. And I have been very other focused to an extent that has, I think for most people, it's been considered very, very unhealthy. And so I do see a contrast here. Again, going back to the nodes now in Aries and Libra of us having, and even the way this energy is playing out over this month with this lunar cycles, um, finding that, that right balance, striking the right balance. And I feel like I need to tell somebody listening, like, and I got to tell myself, you know, what's right for one person may not be right for another, right? Like a lot of people tell me with my Aquarius stellium and Pisces stellium that, you know, that I'm an overgiver, da, 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 and I listen to it and there's some truth to it and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's like, well, my God, if that is your energetic signature, you are here. You are here to serve humanity. And maybe other people are not, they're not. So should they put you down for you living to, um, living up to your purpose in this life, your divine destiny in this life is to be a giver to humanity and serve humanity. But yes, at some point, at uh, what point does humanity need to give back? Otherwise, you know, your well runs dry, you're drained, which um, I, I don't even wanna get into talking about that. That's some deep, dark stuff too. It gets into a very dark zone when there is imbalance. And I can assure you there's been a lot of imbalance. <laughs> Has been, past tense. Do you hear me, universe? <laughs> Let's turn the page. Anyway, this is, I think, bringing about an understanding of when to surrender oneself to the greater good versus when not to. When you put this very ego-focused sun in Leo in early August in the midst of these lunar energies, at, at what point do you surrender yourself to something bigger than yourself? That's going to be really key if you look to me, if you look at the energy of all three lunar cycles going on in the month of August. But again, with these full moons, these two full moons this month, both energies are about endings possibly related to others and their ideals and with this full moon now you know in pisces at the end of the month these are endings having to do with addictions self-sabotage hidden enemies the past it might reflect back to what happened february 20th of this year that might be a time frame that is really relevant because that's when we had a new moon in Pisces. So there's probably a six month, are you closing something up from late last February? Or are you coming to closure? You're closing the chapter on that, right? Like I know around that time frame, I started hitting it pretty hard on TikTok because I wasn't getting the reach here on YouTube. So I, and I'm like, I really need reach, you know? And, and how, do you, how do you get sales? How do you pay your bills if you don't get sales? Because nobody sees your stuff. <laughs> How do you do it? So I'm like, I need reach. So I went to TikTok to get the reach. And there were people who naysayed and didn't like my short content, and which is really all you can do over there. And that's 
what people have the attention span for these days. And so like it or not, I had to kind of conform to it, be a shapeshifter, Pisces, shapeshift myself into that and get a new beginning over there with my spiritual work, Pisces again. So that's what that time frame was for me. And now I don't really think that I'll be ending that work, but I have made some progress on there. I have gotten some new clients. I am getting new clients over there. I've been getting more reach, more views, and it's been slow and steady. It hasn't gone as quick and fast as it did when I first started my channel in 2017. Um, but, you know, I've learned that what grows fast can be also quickly taken away. So there's that, right? So just, you know, keep an open mind about what this ending or culmination or completion is. It might just be, you know, a, shutting a chapter and you continue on to the next one. Because, right, like, I don't think I'll finish posting the TikTok. It's just I'm going to keep going. And hopefully the next chapter of my work on TikTok is bigger and better than the last. Now, also, this new, sorry, this full moon in Pisces may trigger you trying to find some kind of balance between your everyday and, you know, mundane, everyday way of life and your spiritual life. Because this is bringing up this axis of Virgo versus Pisces with the sun in Virgo at the time of this new moon, full moon. Why do I want to keep saying that? There will be a Virgo new moon mid-September, so... <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Let me say, okay, with this axis getting triggered at the time of this full moon, that is going to push us to address uh, maybe something that has been neglected in either aspect of your life, your everyday life, your spiritual life. It might also have to do with healing on a physical versus emotional, spiritual level. If there has been some kind of neglect which has created imbalance with this axis, okay, you will know this because there's going to be some kind of chaos or disorder or excess showing up in your life. And it could be around the time of this full moon that it becomes, in, in, you know, undeniably obvious to you like wow this is really out of whack <laughs> like and you're in your feels about it and you're like oh god and may maybe get a sober reality check like oh god i i need to balance this out this is very unhealthy um and the good news is that with that new moon in virgo on september 14th you will have a lot of energetic support in bringing that balance starting something kick-starting something that will usher in a new beginning but i'm gonna say that at the time of this full moon it, it might be a little harsh i'm i'm just like it's a lot of emotional energy and then you bring to this that this moon is conjunct saturn and pisces so there could be some heaviness and sobriety here in this moment which may leave you feeling emotionally spiritually tested you could be forced to make a really tough choice or face a reality check and this might also bring up a feeling of being emotionally limited in some respect or restricted. You may feel like you're being pressured to change. And if that's the case, and I'm hearing something about consequences, like if you do it or else, I don't know where that's, that's totally off notes, but um, do it or else, like that's, I do want to caution you to avoid making any fear-based decisions at this time. Try to choose the path that is actually going to strengthen you and protect you, not this kind of almost cowering or, right, because we, we're continuing on with, I've got to step into my courage. I've got to like stand in my own power here. I've got to assert my rightful path forward. So I'm not going to cower and make a fear-based decision and be emotionally manipulated. I'm going to opt for whatever option is actually going to strengthen and empower me and protect me. Because I think that ultimately the en energy is purpose to get us to um, become more emotionally and spiritually mature, ready or not, comfortable or not, right? It is really demanding of us to put the work in on this. And that is probably not going to be the most pleasant feeling. So I'm going to go back to what I said about that new moon in Leo around the 16th. Enjoy while you can, because at the end of the month, 
Uh, it might not be so pleasant, okay? It might not be so enjoyable, and it could be that on an emotional level, some kind of lesson in your life, karma maybe, is being triggered. And this would be, tr this would be triggers tying into something that uh, happened or has been going on since March when Saturn first went into Pisces where basically it's gonna be over the next two and a half years. So you gotta look at where Saturn is transiting in your natal chart, and then you'll probably know where that, that squeeze is happening, okay? But this energy has already been quite a sober one where collectively we're all, you know, regardless of how it's showing up in your natal chart, collectively we're all having to um, dispel lies, illusion, deception, and really taking a sober, hard, mature look at where can you honestly put your faith? What could you honestly put your faith into and what you can't? And that is coming through a lot of truths coming out. You know, if you keep up with the media and all that, you, you realize, holy crap, some people followed the Pied Piper off the cliff over the last three years. Did they not? <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, does that hurt some feelings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, what's even worse is that you're looking at how some of these people still have not been held accountable. Questions as to whether or not they will ever be held accountable, because many of us are definitely dealing with the consequences of believing and trusting in people who lied and who have never and might never be held accountable. Unless, you know, I'm being brought back to that, that saying, evil prevails when good men do nothing. Edmund Burke, I believe. So this is an energy like of Saturn saying, I, I, don't, I don't care if it feels good to you. I don't, I don't care if it hurts your feelings. Like you gotta, you, you gotta sober up, stop being a sucker, you know, stop being all about your, you know, childlike and off in your fantasy land and pleasure and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's time to grow up. It's try, time to man up or woman up, alpha up and get on with it. And the good news is that with the new moon in Virgo on September 14th, I do believe it's an energy that is gonna encourage us to take more action to correct these issues. So have fun while you can, because it's get to work time mid-September. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll be talking more about it then. Um, and in the meantime, I hope y'all enjoy your astro tarot readings. I will be out on the road. If you want to connect with me, uh, let me know. Also wanted to say I am continuing to work on a special on the war on families. It's been taking me a little extra while because I've been really trying to be spirit led about how I'm managing my workload. And, and I'll be straight with you. There is um, a heaviness in me completing that work. I definitely feel like it, you know, I'm supposed to do it. It was the catalyst for me doing the other two specials, War on Men, War on Women, but I have not yet finished it um, because I, 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 I'm, it's, it, it really means a lot to me. It hits very close to home, particularly with this new moon in Leo um, triggering the fourth house for my Aquarius and Taurus placements. Very much close to home, very much close to my heart. Uh, so I am like halfway through editing it right now and it's already been, you know, it's more than halfway complete, you know, I filmed it, researched it, everything halfway through editing it. So I will get it up as soon as I get a release to do that and know that when it's up, my gosh, um, that that's, that's really close to my heart, that, that message. And I hope it, it means a lot to you too in healing your families because a lot of us we got a lot of work to do. And hopefully, Virgo season, we'll start making some headway on it. Till next time, y'all have fun. Be blessed.